Hey everybody, this is Kelsey from the Arcane Library and today I'm gonna walk you through a new adventure I have out that you can get totally for free and it is in the Shadow Dark Game Master Quick Start Guide, which is a part of this whole Quick Start set. It has a player's guide, a Game Master's guide, and then it comes with these pre-made characters with really cool art on one side and then all the stats on the other. Um, you can get a digital version of this completely for free on my website, uh, thearcanelibrary.com. I'll put links below. Um, even if just to get this adventure that I'm about to walk you through, it's a great kind of old school D&D adventure that's very exploration focused and I had a ton of fun writing it. So I want to give you the whole scoop on how to run it so you can grab this and run it right away if you want. And I will also put some notes in the description below for how to kind of convert this over to 5e if you want to run it for 5e instead, but I am personally partial to Shadow Dark RPG being that I wrote it, so uh, scope it out if you want. It's a ton of fun. And let me take you through this. So, the Lost Citadel of the Scarlet Minotaur. Now, the first thing to note is in this book or in whichever version you have, it has a map at the back, a labeled map. Um, it also comes with, the digital version comes with a uh, like high quality JPEG of the map, so you could use it on a virtual tabletop or just have it for reference. So I actually drew this map myself. Um, aren't you proud of me? It's, it's kind of rudimentary, but I actually had an absolute blast drawing it. So let me explain to you what's going on in this adventure. So this is for first through third level characters for Shadow Dark RPG. It's basically my sixth edition D&D &D if I were to make D&D &D more old school and kind of build it up from scratch. So it'd be very familiar to anybody who already plays D&D &D of any edition. So to get started, the background here. So this complex, because it's, it's a giant dungeon, um, was actually modeled on Knossos, which was, it's an old ruin on the island of Crete. And it's fascinating, super cool, one of the first like palaces ever built in Europe. And so um, this was really inspired by some of my delving into that structure. Um, and this is kind of where the myth of the Minotaur came from because this, the, the structure of Knossos was called like labyrinthine. It was built sort of before architectural planning was a big thing. Um, and so the inside of it was very much like a maze. And so when I drew this map, I wanted to channel that vibe. So you can see like, there's a lot of tight corridors, a lot of winding passages. There is in fact, even a sort of maze with dead ends and the whole purpose is for the characters to get a bit lost in it. Um, and that was inspired by the source material here, studying Knossos, and then a lot of ideas about Minotaurs flew into my head unbidden and I had to write this. So um, what's happening right now is this was once a stronghold of some, you know, mighty warriors that worshiped bulls. And um, they had a devastating thing happen where their leader, the third son of the first founder of this castle, um, he was conducting rituals to try to gain more and more strength in the name of the bull god. And uh, things went awry and his bloodthirstiness became too much and he actually was transformed into a minotaur, the red minotaur, the namesake of this adventure. Um, he's still in the halls to this day, haunting them as an immortal being, um, killing and maiming any who try to venture into the structure. In the meantime, there are beast men who have been living in secret inside this structure. Um, they were sort of the fallen brethren of these warriors, um, sort of like a servile class of people who knew about the secret tunnels built into this castle, since those were sort of like the service corridors that they used to move between rooms unseen. So when this tragedy happened, when the Scarlet Minotaur came to be and went on a rampage, they fled into the secret passages. And they have been living in fear the entire time since as a small like pocket civilization inside this building. They believe that there are dragons outside the castle. This is something they were told during the time that they were forced into servitude to keep them in check. And they still believe it to this day. So they're too afraid to actually leave 
the structure. So instead, they live in secret, hiding from the Scarlet Minotaur and eking out an existence, eating rats and centipedes. So um, those are the two factions that are native to the structure, and there's one more faction inside this dungeon. There are some Ettercaps who have crept in from the caves and tunnels that lead into this structure, um, and they are kind of treasure crazed. They don't have any leadership. They're all sort of democratically equal in their desire for treasure. And they have been running around the complex, nabbing any valuables and sort of pushing their luck. So when the characters get here, depending on how they enter, because there are several entrances, um, they will run into one of these factions first. And there's an escalating risk over time that they will encounter the Scarlet Minotaur, a very deadly encounter. So um, I want to give you the rundown on how all that works. So first off, um, in this overview, this page spread here, you're going to get all the background information, very concise, um, the factions, and some rumors you can throw at your characters. Um, get them involved. And then we've got the, the list of the different ways one can enter. There are four ways to enter the structure. There's a central courtyard, which is located right here. Boop. Um, there's a front entrance, which is down here. And there are two side entrances. So there's a way to come in through the labyrinth over here. And then there's a north entrance way up here um, the characters could come in through. So I'm not going to go into every single room in this dungeon because it's got a lot of rooms in it, but I want to give you the highlights and explain to you how it all works. So one thing to be aware of from the start, there are a variety of bronze bull statues, and they're marked on the map with this B in a circle. Will you focus, camera? Do you see that B right there? So those are motion-activated traps. And so if the characters ever come into the line of sight of one of those statues, there's a 50-50 chance it's going to activate and charge down the hall and plow through people and cause harm. But they have a gemstone on their forehead that, if shattered, deactivates them. Here's a cap set. Gemstone's worth a lot of money if it's not shattered. So if the characters can somehow get the gemstone out of the statue without shattering it, they're going to come away with some very valuable treasure. Otherwise, they can try to deactivate the statues. So be aware of that. Those are marked on the maps. Now, I'm, I'm assuming the characters are going to usually come in through the front gates. If they choose to explore, good on them. They might find another way in. I have had groups in playtesting come in through the central courtyard, and this is where the Scarlet Minotaur lurks and often returns to. So the characters will probably see him stalking around at some point. Um, so in this very first room, um, the characters have a chance at encountering an Edder Cap. And if they were to move in this direction towards these caves, um, there are some Edder Cap encounters that can take place in here. Um, the characters may ally with the Edder Caps. They may treat them as enemies. They may decide to just leave each other alone. Um, as long as the Edder Caps are given treasure or allowed to keep their treasure, they're generally okay coexisting with the characters. But for the most part, I've had groups just enter into hostilities with the Edder Caps or try to use them as like, you go check that room out, flunkies. And you know, however they play that with the Edder Caps um, would be interesting and fun. They're semi-difficult combatants, but not impossible to defeat. Um, in those opening chambers, there are murals. There's some hidden treasure in the first room. Um, there's a big cave that's got a blinding effect. Um, there's some silk wrapped, at least spider silk wrapped beast men. The first hint at the beast men the characters might encounter. Um, with some treasure hidden away inside one of them. And so that's all things that the characters might encounter. Now, if the characters get to the Ettercap nest where they're lairing, um, there are some a variety of named NPCs here. So, um, for example, Yisha is tiny and sinister. Grisk is old and irritable. So I try to give a couple keywords for each Ettercap. But there's also the chance characters will encounter roaming Edder Caps on the random encounters table and all that. So there are, at the very last page here, there's an NPC generator for the Beastmen and the Edder Caps. You can use this to generate like appearances and names and quick little behaviors, personalities, for an enormous amount of Beastmen or Edder Caps. So no, you can use that. If the characters run into an unnamed NPC, you have that at your disposal. So, one of my favorite rooms I want to touch on that I designed for this adventure is um, going to be once the characters sort of work their way up to this chamber right here. 
This is room nine. Um, these are the sorceress pillars, and this is a really fun trap. Um, probably the most complex trap I have yet written for Shadow Dark RPG. Um, but these are four pairs of pillars that are painted in these jewel tones and capped in black marble. And what happens is each time the characters cross a pair of pillars, they're moving closer to an altar that's on the opposite side of the room where a very obvious great sword is placed. Now there are three magic items, three weapons of legend. That were, that were said to be hidden inside this temple, and this is one of them. This is a great sword that is called Asterion, and it has magical properties, but to get to it, the characters have to get through this tough trap. There's a dead air cap in this room with hints all over it about how these pillars work, but when the characters cross one set of pillars, a new effect begins that doesn't end until they cross back through those pillars. So the first set of pillars, red, anything flammable on them ignites, 1d4 damage around. The next set of pillars is blue, sea water fills your lungs, you drown in 1d6 rounds. The third set, poisoned, dc12 constitution check on your turn or you lose your turn. And then finally the purple pillars right before the altar, if you cross them, you go blind and move at half speed. So if a character can get through those with careful planning and get all the way up to the altar, they'll have to make a normal strength check, DC 12 strength check, to pull that great sword out and then get back across the pillars. So I have seen groups go to all ends to try to get to this great sword with some very creative solutions for how to handle these pillars. So I think that'd be a very fun encounter for most groups. Um, moving around, a lot of the uh, east side of the complex has um, empty rooms. There are a few um, potential undead, like in room 12. Signs of the Minotaur having laid waste to the people who once lived here. So the characters will encounter that as they're exploring this east side. As they're moving over to the west side, um, they'll find that here there's a labyrinth, like I mentioned. Um, and at each dead end, there are some offering jars and a chance for characters to scrounge up a bit of loot and risk being haunted by the spirits that those jars were meant to honor because they're burial jars. So one other room right here, 21, this room has a door on it that leading in, there's, an, there's like an awkward jelly right here that's hidden on the ground and then the door itself um, shoots magical fire at characters who aren't careful because inside this room is where another of the legendary weapons is hidden. There's a magical spear in here that's a really fantastic treasure if characters can get to it. Um, and then I wanna touch on the beast men. Their main stronghold is right here. And they're, a lot, they're hiding behind a lot of secret doors. You'll see that most entrances to where they're hanging out are hidden behind secret doors. Um, but there is an NPC, Brel who is in this room, and when the characters first come upon him, he has been fleeing from the Scarlet Minotaur and tripped and knocked himself unconscious. So he's the first out in the open beast man NPC that the characters could encounter. They could ally with him. He's a bit pathetic. He's trying to impress his brother, who's the leader of the beast men, and he just simply can't catch a break with his brother. So um, the characters might find him to be a bit empathetic. Um, and he could be a way in to ally with the beast men potentially. Um, or, you know, maybe the characters want to help Brawl uh, take his place of honor and maybe they want to overthrow his brother. Who knows? There's a lot of ways that could go. Um, so the last really important room uh, I want to talk about is, again, that central courtyard. That's where the Scarlet Minotaur lurks. The characters will eventually encounter the Scarlet Minotaur because during the exploration of this complex, there, every time a random encounter triggers, it moves closer to being the Scarlet Minotaur. It inexorably moves towards that. So I have had groups encounter the Scarlet Minotaur almost immediately, and I've had others that explored the Citadel, left and came back, and kept exploring until eventually they encountered it. So um, when the characters encounter the Minotaur, um, the stats are in here for all of the monsters in this adventure, but the Minotaur is a very, very dangerous combatant. I've had a TPK group once before. I have had one group ever defeated in combat due to some really clever tactics and some lucky rolls. Um, but the characters probably want to run if they encounter the Minotaur unless they can set up a really cool way to defeat it. Um, and the Minotaur will forget about enemies it can't see 
after a short number of rounds. So it's very possible to flee from it successfully. And the characters will see signs throughout the complex of people who have tried to do that um, at times in the past. So that's the, we're reaching towards the end here. Um, there's the Hall of Kings, which has the statues of the three kings who ruled this complex, Minoros being the last one um, who became the Scarlet Minotaur and led to the downfall of this area. Um, area 27 is a place where the characters can find a lot of treasure, a lot of offerings. Um, there's a big pool of water here, like an underground pond with a lot of treasure on the bottom, but there's an ongoing chance too that some shadowy dead spirits that haunt that room will descend upon the characters and attack them as well. So this adventure is all about how far do you want to push your luck? Um, how long do you want to keep exploring? How much do you want to risk? And this can support characters up through third level and still be an interesting challenge. So I envision this as a complex that the characters will come and go from with numerous forays in to get the treasure, to find those legendary weapons, um, and to just explore and see what's going on here. And that's, that's kind of the whole scoop. I'd love for you to check this out. Like I said, you can get it for free. Shadow Dark RPG is the full book is coming out soon. The, this quick start guide will let you um, run adventures for characters up through third level, fully supported, and it has eight first level pre-gens so you can just jump right in. And then you should sign up to get notified when the full book launches. It's gonna be very soon. It's like 330 pages. It's a full, full RPG and it is it is D&D if I was allowed to redesign it from scratch, um, honoring the old school styles, the exploration style that has sort of faded over time and, and deserves to be brought back to life. So um, that is what I am doing with this. And I really hope you find this adventure and this quick start guide to be a wonderful and engaging introduction to the game. I would love to hear if you run this adventure. Throw me some comments down below. Um, let me know what you think. And thank you so much for scoping this out. I will catch you guys on the next video. All right, happy gaming.